Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Now this says that let us discuss why Pakistan lagged behind in the space domain. Please tell us one domain in which Pakistan is ahead. Forget about space. Space is outside the earth, top of the line. But even we know that you know they have an expertise in something else. In Pakistan, they'll tell a Lieutenant General to perform a neurosurgery because he's a Lieutenant General. Jain friends, I'm Major Gauravari and you're watching the Chanakya Dialogues English. Like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Friends, uh, you know that EV, electrical vehicles are, you know, the mode of transport of the future and uh, a lot of work is being done in India. However, there is a problem about how the Chinese invest, what kind of opaque companies they have. And a lot of Chinese companies, especially in electronics and telecommunications, are companies that, you know, if you figure out what their holding companies are, you'll find another shell company and another shell company. And if you keep on going back somewhere, somewhere or the other, you will find the PLA, the People's Liberation Army. You heard that right. So the People's Liberation Army of China or the Communist Party of China, it's People's Liberation Army is not the Chinese army. It's important. Uh, uh, just hear me out patiently for a minute and I'll tell you what I'm saying. The PLA is not the Chinese Army, the Chinese Navy or the Chinese Air Force. The PLA, the People's Liberation Army, is the armed wing of the Communist Party of China. Hence, uh, it controls a lot of business. It controls business that is strategic in nature. Business that can harm another country. You know, when India started banning these Chinese apps, you know, a whole lot of them, I think 200 or Chinese apps India banned. Uh, China objected. But if you check many of these apps, the companies behind it, it's very opaque. It's very, very difficult to find out. But you'll have Chinese dissidents in the US. You know, they work for the CCP. They're members of the CCP. They left, they sought refuge in China. And today, those people have come out in the media and said that so many of these mobile phone applications, so many of these companies, big Chinese brands, are controlled by the PLA, owned by the PLA which is never there, you know, this, this information never gets out because the Chinese market is so opaque. And the reason why I'm telling you this is that I think the government of India has done a brilliant thing. BYD is a company based out of China, makes electrical vehicles and good electrical vehicles. I have sat in one or two of their vehicles also. I also, before joining the media, I was part of the smart group. I was a president there and uh, I was sent by the chairman to China to study BYD because we wanted a tie up with the BYD. I remember I've been to their factories, I've met their people. India said no to BYD investment in India. BYD wanted to invest 1 billion US dollars in India. Uh, and the idea was to set up a factory along with Mega Engineering. Mega Engineering is a local Indian company and BYD Motors uh, wanted to tie up with Mega Engineering and set up a $1 billion company in Hyderabad. The government of India said no. Now, there are two factors here, okay? They wanted to make 10,000 to 15,000 electrical cars. We don't need Chinese cars. We have the Tatas and the Mahindras of the world and we are adept at making our own cars. So, no thank you, China. Anyway, over a period of time, what has been seen is that the government of India is actually cutting down Chinese investments to size. Because the Chinese are opaque, they take a lot of shortcuts, they break a lot of rules and a lot of corruption in Chinese dealings. So, the enforcement directorate, you know, has actually some big Chinese mobile phone brands have been called into account and they've been asked to show their books and uh, you know what's happening. Uh, you know, you're sending money back to China and you're a whole lot of stuff. So there are a lot of changes that are happening, including uh, saying that these companies must be headed by Indians and all that. So India is doing everything that it can to make the Chinese businesses in India more transparent. They're opaque right now, very opaque. That is the Chinese way of doing business, you know. That is the Chinese way of running the government, actually. That is the way China runs. Everything is very opaque. Nobody knows what the hell is going on. But in this case, what India is doing is telling big, massive countries, billions upon billions of dollars, you know, uh, BYD is worth. And they're telling companies like BYD that you're not welcome to India. BYD has been here for a long time, by the way. And you can buy BYD cars in India. Uh, you might see a one-odd BYD car running around somewhere. But uh, there is BYD presence in India. I know the BYD people in India personally. But I welcome the step of the government of India. Sorry, go back. You're not going to be allowed to set up a factory here. You never know what the Chinese are up to. It's very dicey, especially in the field of, uh, you know, telecommunications and electronics and stuff like that. Uh, so this is what India has done. Great. Now, China has agreed to reschedule 2 billion of 
Pakistan's debt. Earlier it was 600 billion and now again 2 billion dollars worth of Pakistani debt. China has said we will restructure. This gives Pakistan some breathing space. Okay. Now people are saying that in the next 3-4 years, you know, different people, different data. So I don't know which one to believe, but this is all Pakistani saying it, that Pakistan needs to pay back to the world. You know, external creditors, it needs to pay back uh, what? Something like uh, 75 to 85 billion dollars over the over the next 3-4 years or 5 years or something like that. So, uh, I don't know how Pakistan is going to be able to manage because we have not heard from Ishak Dar, the finance minister of Pakistan, right? Mifta Ismail, the previous one, he made a lot of sense. He was a sensible sort of a guy. Uh, Ishak Dar is an absolute loose cannon, alright? And uh, so, there is no plan in Pakistan about how they are going to increase their exports. What policies are they going to put in place so that the people are facilitated? Uh, what are they getting uh, uh, or in, in terms of investments? All we heard was some crazy scheme of Pakistan saying that, you know, you'll get a citizenship if you invest in, in Pakistan. Who, who wants to invest in Pakistan and why would a person? Why would a person? I mean, unless he's playing man versus wild with bear gorillas or somebody, why would somebody want to come to Pakistan in the first place? Pakistanis don't want to go to Pakistan. And here they want American and European businessmen to come with suitcases full of dollars and invest in Pakistan. How is that even possible? And what are you giving them? What are you giving these people? Pakistani citizenship? I mean, come on. Uh, you know, it's, it's really laughable what Pakistan does. Now, Pakistan got a rollover of $2 billion and I think Pakistan should be happy, but also figure out a way by which they can return this money. Because finally, this money has to be returned. You see, Pakistanis behave like teenagers with credit cards, you know, where you take your father's credit card and keep on swiping. And their father is China. They keep on taking the credit card and swiping. You have to pay back someday. Somebody has to pay back those loans. And in Pakistan, there is no vision. How are we going to pay back these loans? Uh, so, $2 billion rollover. Congratulations, Pakistan. I guess that's the best you can do. Under the circumstances, uh, there are also, uh, they're saying huge increase in power tariff to meet IMF uh, demand. So this news headline, it says as Pakistan moves forward to meet the IMF terms, the federal cabinet authorized a significant uh, increase in the electricity base rate through circulation summary in a late night decision. So where does Pakistan get the money from? You see, this is a devilish cycle, what Pakistan has got stuck into. So uh, they have to listen to the IMF because they cannot manage their own country. So IMF says, okay, since you can't manage your own country, we'll manage it for you. So everything is decided. Uh, the, the rate of gas, the rate of petrol, the rate of electricity, the interest rates, everything is decided by the IMF. And then Pakistan says that it's a sovereign country because they have a nuclear bomb or some nonsense to that effect. Everything is controlled by a foreigner or a foreign agent sitting in Pakistan. And then Pakistan says that, you know, we are a sovereign country. No, you're not. Because the first thing that a country needs to practice is economic sovereignty and you do not have economic sovereignty. You do not have geographical sovereignty because the Afghans enter your country at will. Yeah, They, they just come inside, do whatever they want and go back. You don't have political sovereignty because this is what Imran Khan said. I'm not saying it. Imran Khan said that the Americans interfere and the Americans are the ones who, you know, toppled his regime. So you don't have economic sovereignty. You don't have geographical sovereignty. You don't have political sovereignty. What? How are you a sovereign nation? Please explain. And I'm quoting Imran Khan, I'm not saying this myself. Okay, now, very interesting article. This is from the Deccan Herald, but this has been doing the rounds in Pakistan. And I think Deccan Herald picked up that news from Pakistan. And they've, uh, you know, written this. That why is Pakistan lagging behind in space exploration? Uh, you know, they always have this, this thing that, you know, this comparison with India. That why is India ahead and why are we behind and we, we became independent on the same day, I keep on telling Pakistanis that we did not become independent on the same day. India became independent, you were created, there is a huge difference, but forget about that. Uh, you know, we came into modern existence the same day, some funny language that the Pakistanis use, and then say that why, there's always this lament, always this comparison with India. And this article is funny because, you know, let's look at some of the critical factors that have contributed to Pakistan's lag in the space domain. Now, this says that let us discuss why Pakistan lagged behind in the space domain. Please tell us one domain in which Pakistan is ahead. Forget about space. Space is outside the earth, no? Space. What about other domain? What about food, yeah? 
what about agriculture what about manufacturing what about basic commerce what about production what about uh, culture what about uh, sports what about anything in pakistan yeah? everything is lagging behind i mean why should space go forward everything the entire country is in reverse gear ever since it was created the only time pakistanis have money is when the americans land up in afghanistan and start throwing dollars at pakistan yeah? that's it pakistan has never had traditionally money because pakistan never believed in earning money they thought that we are and jinnah told them all this nonsense you know mohammad ali jinnah told lies to the pakistanis they believed his lies and all the generals told them the same lies all the army chiefs and everybody all the you know big people in pakistan who have steered pakistan with whatever levels of uh, efficiency over the past 75 years they've been telling pakistan this lie that because you are in such an important geo strategic position you are in such a important space that even if you don't earn the world will be forced to look after you so relax stay at home go to sleep you don't have to do anything the world has to look after you there is nothing that the world can do without you and senior pakistani analysts and senior pakistani television anchors you know 60 70 years of age have spent almost 40 45 years in various media you know print media radio television they say this sort of nonsense to the pakistanis no wonder pakistanis are not performing anywhere because they have been given to believe that somebody will look after them you you are like this adopted child of a millionaire that you know even if you don't do anything somehow somebody will look after you it's the world's responsibility looking after pakistan is not pakistan's responsibility it is the world's responsibility so here here are some funny points that you may want to hear today is sunday have a ball enjoy yourself so one of the reasons attributed to the lag in space exploration is pakistan struggle with persistent economic challenges hindering significant investments in space research and exploration but no that's not true this argument the first argument Uh, that is made is that you know pakistan has faced economic challenges which is why what economic challenges pakistan is not a poor country it's just a mismanaged country you see you go to pakistan and you at least i've seen photographs of dha people with mercedes and bmws right you inaugurate a tim horton and there is the largest line in the world pakistani is going abroad by the thousands by the thousands to europe and america every month for holidays this is a country that is always on the verge of a party or doing a party or coming back from a party they are enjoying life where is the lack of money all these american dollars that were given in the war on terror what happened to those dollars can you tell me billions upon tens of billions of dollars were given to pakistan tens of billions of dollars the americans gave they wrote blank checks for pakistan the chinese gave them money where is that money Where is that money I'm asking? Chinese spent or invested 50 billion US dollars in the China Pakistan economic corridors. In that economic corridor part of the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, the Chinese have already invested 50 billion US dollars inside Pakistan. Where is that money? Where is that money? Where is the money that the Americans gave for for fighting polio, for uh, girls education, for female rights, for sports? you know under one guise or the other america was giving you know dollars would flow into pakistan traditionally they have been flowing into pakistan where is that money so to say that pakistan is a poor country no sorry they have got enough ill gotten wealth it is just that the leaders are thieves pakistan was never in an economic soup it is just when the americans stopped giving money then they said oh we are going to default we are going to default and this whole default drama started after the americans left afghanistan till the time the americans were there in afghanistan pakistanis were making money they were very happy they are very happy going to mcdonald's kfc and tim hortons they are not interested in working it's only the pakistani lower class and the middle class that works the rest of the people upstairs the entitled people who are sitting upstairs you know the ashrafia so called of pakistan they haven't worked a single honest day in their lives so why are these people this whole thing is useless established in 1961 8 years prior to isro again this comparison Pakistan Space Organization Pakistan and Upper Atmosphere Research Commission SUPARCO has fallen behind ISRO which ranks among the top 10 large space agencies globally while India's moon mission cruises smoothly in space the country is also gearing up for its ambitious maiden human spaceflight mission Gaganyaan 
scheduled for 2023 or 2024. ISRO is also preparing its first expedition, the yeah, Aditya L1 and all that. Pakistani Space Agency. I'll tell you what is, what is wrong with Pakistani Space Agency. First of all, everything is done by generals in your country. So you look at who's the head of the Pakistani Suparko. That is the Pakistani version of ISRO. And every time the Pakistan, oh, we started uh, Suparko eight years before ISRO. How does it matter if you started eight years or 50 years before ISRO? You do nothing, yeah? You know, Pakistanis feel happy on data that should not make anybody happy. It should make them feel useless, which they are. Now, think about this. They say that we created Suparko eight years before or seven years before ISRO. So I'm saying you had a head start. What did you do? Simply creating an organization for a general to sit. How does it help you? The last four, five uh, heads of Suparko have been major generals of the Pakistan army. They're not astronauts. They're not scientists. They're just major generals. Maybe some of them have an engineering degree. That's all. That's it. So you destroyed your own space mission. You destroyed everything because if it were up to you, the head of the Pakistani cricket board would be an army officer. He'd be some lieutenant general or somebody. You'd put generals everywhere. Which gives the other, uh, you know, the, the impression to the outside world that other Pakistanis are not capable. It's only their generals who are capable. The rest of the Pakistanis are useless. Which is clearly not the case. Because I personally know a lot of brilliant Pakistanis. But this, you know, this article is very interesting, ladies and gentlemen. And you must go through this article, uh, which, which we have posted here. And I would request the editor to put the article in the, in the description box below. So that you can take a look and it makes for good reading and a lot of stuff has been written after Chandrayaan 3 took off in the Pakistani media that why our space program has been, uh, you know, behind the Indians. Three reasons. Number one, lack of priorities. And when India launched, you were criticizing India's mission also. That there are so many poor people in India. Why is India doing it? One, you lack the capability of doing it yourself. When somebody else is doing it, you want to pull him down. Not that you're able to, but you do want to pull him down. That is point number one. Point number two, absolute lack of vision. Absolute lack of vision. Number three, this over-dependence on Major General Falana and Major Dem General this and Lieutenant General this. Fauji's are good. Army generals are good for the army. They're excellent there. Not yours. I'm talking about mine. Okay, yours are useless everywhere. I'm talking about Indian Army generals, top of the line. But even we know that, you know, they have an expertise in something else. In Pakistan, they'll tell a lieutenant general to perform a neurosurgery because he's a lieutenant general. So stop all this. If you want your space program, get civilians, get experts and then fund it. And achieve small little victories. From there you will grow. So ladies and gentlemen, with this, I come to the end of this video. If you like this video, press like. Subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Jai Hind, Vande Matram, Bharat Mata Ki Jai.